There are a lot of reasons to avoid shows you do not enjoy. The main one being you don't enjoy them. But one reason that I like watching shows of a variety of quality is because I like seeing how they do similar things differently. Boku no Hero is not unique with many of the things it's done and many of the reasons I love it could also be applied to other shows. So today I want to look at a few similar shows or at least shows with similar aspects to try to highlight how Boku no Hero is able to differentiate itself. Now I am not saying that any of the the other shows I'm going to talk about today are bad. Some of them I like quite a bit and would even recommend. I'm also not trying to specifically pick on certain shows just to jump on a hate train for them, but they are the ones that stand out the most in my mind to make the points I want to make. So with that disclaimer in mind, I think it is safe to bring up Black Clover. Black Clover is very similar to Boku no Hero in a lot of its overall story and themes. Asta wants to be the greatest wizard, the Wizard King. Deku wants to be the greatest hero. They both start off the show powerless in a world where most people have some sort of power, and then later they get one of the most powerful abilities in the world. Both main characters have a rival who is after the same goal as they are, but while both stories are cliche, the reason I love Boku no Hero but only think Black Clover is kind of okay is because of the execution. I was sold on Boku no Hero after two episodes, while I spent most of the first two episodes of Black Clover wanting to drop it. There was a big moment in the end of both episode 1 and 2 of Black Clover that got me interested by seeing Asta get his power and I was able to admire his determination, not unlike the end of Boku no Hero second episode that showed how Deku's determination would make him a hero. But the tightly woven storytelling in Boku no Hero caused it to work so much better. Each scene added something important to the story, from getting us to understand the world or explain who Deku is or learning more about All Might. It all contributed to the message of the introduction and the show as a whole about what it meant to be a hero. It also did a great job of getting us to connect and to root for Deku. In Black Clover's case though, we only got a couple of these things. Much of the flashback in episode 2 felt like we were not learning anything new and the world was so loosely presented that I don't feel like I understand how it works. Asta is one of the most annoying main characters I've ever seen, making it really hard to want to root for him, so I guess it is impressive that I do kind of root for him even despite all that. Sure, I like his whole not giving up and wanting to help people attitude, but him being an idiot who screams everything really limits how much I can get behind him. Another issue is with how the show presents the theme. The theme of the show is that if you do not give up you can do amazing things no matter where you start off. But the only reason Asta has the power that he does is because he has a demonic grimoire which seemed to be just given to him by luck. So that means the message is that anyone with a ton of luck can be great, which doesn't seem to be what the series is trying to go for. Maybe later on the show will explain this more, but I don't think it will have as strong a connection as there is between Deku's positive characteristics and him getting his power. Another recent example, for me at least, is Twin Star Exorcist. This is a 50 episode action shonen that aired from spring of 2016 up through winter of 2017 that was mostly generic but had a few good parts. Its strength lied with the two protagonists and the romance that was starting to bloom between them. There's also a lot about them overcoming their past plus those cliches that are in every shonen that I like. But one of its biggest weaknesses was how unlikable Benio was at first. Something that caused me to almost drop the show early on, as opposed to likable characters like Deku, All Might, and even Bakugo. Twin Star also fell apart with a battle at the end of the first major arc, with the characters up against an enemy who was far stronger than them, so they had lots of power-ups come out of nowhere in order to win. Now the one power-up did make sense given the role of another character, but then they kept pushing other things further so that it just didn't make any sense. And this contrast Boku no Hero, where the battles mostly did make a lot of sense in how they played out. Another big issue was the first few episodes after the time skip felt like filler, with there being no real plot progression and with new characters just not having any role beyond that episode. So that is why I decided to drop it there. This contrast with Boku no Hero in that every episode had something to move either the plot or the characters forward, even the ones that technically were filler. Though I do have to say I was impressed with episode 24 Twin Star, though I'll save that for later. 
But if you are a mediocre show to begin with and then you start resorting to filler, I am going to go find something else to watch. And Twin Star is far from the only shonen to have this issue since it feels like a lot of them eventually just fall into a number of episodes where nothing interesting is happening either with filler or just bad pacing as a whole. And lastly for recent shows, let's talk about another supposed copy of Boku no Hero, The Reflection. And well, it should not be hard to see the differences. At the end of the first episode, we really have no idea what is going on and we have little to no connection with the characters to want to see more about them. While the style was there, it just felt dull despite its uniqueness, and many of the blows of the fights just had no impact. Not to mention the style not making any sense with what was going on. Like, yes, I know this is America, but that does not mean every screen in New York City would have a picture of the American flag. This isn't Texas, after all. Plus, the music is kind of neat, but it just gets old and repetitive quickly and doesn't seem to really fit. Plus, you also have a bad dub. Come on, Funimation. I normally like your dubs, but this just... No, I expect more from Stan Lee as well. Then there's also JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. While my full thoughts on season one can't be done here, there's one aspect about the show I really have an issue with, and that is how it treats a lot of its side characters, especially in part two. The show places so much importance on JoJo and how he always saves the day that the other characters are robbed from having moments to really shine. And it does not seem like it should be an issue since you have three main heroes and three main villains. And the bigger issue here is that for Jojo to keep having his moments of awesome, he had to pull crazy techniques including an airplane out of nowhere, ruining any logical storytelling the battles could have had. And I get that a lot of the point of Jojo is to be absurd, but you can still do that and then give all the characters time to shine, like Kill a Kill did. Yes, Ryoku got more highlights than the others, but there were also great moments for Satsuki, the lead four, and even Mako. Fairy Tale is another example where I like a lot about it, but the battles caused the show to fall apart because of their constant reliance on determination and power of friendship for power-ups. I do like power of friendship, but it really only gives you so much and can only be used so often. Then you also have a lot of light novel adaptations where you have a main character with some special power that allows them to defeat everyone else. And while this trope on its own isn't bad, and Boku no Hero kind of has it too, it feels cheap when there isn't a way the main character actually earns their victory. Show a more gradual growth where the characters are actually learning as they become stronger, instead of just magically getting the power they need. At least make the battles exciting from a tactical perspective where they have to think and outsmart their opponent to win instead of just being blatantly overpowered. So this video is proof that while I may be a shonen fanboy, it's not that I can't see the flaws in these shows. And again, I am not saying that any of these shows are necessarily bad, just pointing out the places that I feel they fail where Boku no Hero succeeds. And so that concludes this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all next time.